Arriving for work and to the news of one of Britain's biggest corporate collapses in years, talks have failed between Carillion's creditors and the government, throwing hundreds of major projects into doubt, as well as 20,000 jobs in the UK alone. I don't have much to say to be honest. Responsible for projects from football stadiums to high-speed rail, banks lost faith in the 200-year-old firm after costly contract delays and a slump in new business left it with a ballooning debt pile of £1.5 billion. The government now forced to guarantee vital public services provided by Carillion, including the management of some schools and prisons. The administration will be conducted in an orderly fashion. We as government will continue to pay the wages and salaries of employees working on those public sector contracts. But many are asking why Carillion continued to be awarded such high profile contracts when it's been struggling for months. Everyone could see the problems there and they were coming for a long time and then suddenly it comes as a surprise perhaps in the civil service that things are not as they should be. So I think it needs better training um, for the UK government to be able to deal with these kind of companies. The firm also employs more than 20,000 workers overseas and has worked on the Suez Canal Road Tunnel and Toronto's Union Station. After the financial crisis, British construction firms bid low prices for long-term fixed-price contracts. I think it's about time the government did start to look at the sector more um, robustly and say, look, you need to do these things on a more sensible basis in terms of um, your accounting for contracts. You can't rush into things too much. You can't um, just assume that you will receive um, the profits from those. Trading in Carillion shares has been suspended. Its market value had slumped to less than a tenth of what it was this time last year.